There are many spirits in the spirit world, both males and female spirits in the spirit world, who do not want you to understand the truth about sexual attraction. Because if you understand the truth about sexual attraction, then they have less ability to manipulate you with relationships and therefore less ability to share in the relationship with you or to share in the sexual engagements that, you, that, that happen with you. So the more you understand about sexual attraction, the safer sexually your life becomes, actually, uh, because there are less spirits influencing all of your decisions about relationships. And less injury, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's why we wanted to uh, discuss that topic with you today. What we thought we'd do, firstly, though, is just have a bit of a summary first of the soul and how it splits and how it incarnates so that we just remember the basics about the soul and soul attractions because actually sexual attraction is a part of the soulmate relationship and therefore we need to understand you know why sexual attraction actually exists as well both in a pure state and just in an error based okay. state as well you, okay you want shall me to, we stay yeah. on either side of the board yeah um, is that okay okay so we've discussed with you how God, who has masculine and feminine qualities, created all of these little tiny beings called souls, both of which have masculine and feminine qualities. And depending on the... There's a wide variety of masculine and feminine qualities in the soul. Some, some of the souls are dominantly masculine as an entire soul, and some are dominantly feminine. And, when, and they split. Every soul splits into two in the process of individualization. So we have one half. If we choose a heterosexual... I'll draw it the other way around. If we choose a heterosexual soul, uh, we have one half and the other half. They split. And when we say split, one half always leaves the split first and then they come into a body. So... Let's say it was the male who did that. Then the male is attracted to two bodies that are created for it. There's a spirit body that's created for it and a physical body that's created for it at the time of conception. And the soul then envelops those bodies and remains connected to those bodies for its entire lifetime while it's developing in the, on earth and then it releases the physical body and then there's a period of time all the way through the spirit world up until the soul union condition which we'll talk about in a second that uh, where it release it can release its spirit body so the souls then join back together and in fact these bodies are a necessary part of the half of the soul while the soul hasn't joined with its other half in other words the soul senses which are all these feelings that are absorbed from the universe, the se even the sense of sight, taste, touch, and all of those all other types of senses. So we're talking not just emotional senses, but feeling-based senses. All of them need the soul, are all funneled, if you like, through a cord into the soul. So there's the cord that joins the physical and spirit body, and people call that the silver cord. And... And let's call this, this cord that joins the spirit body with the soul, let's call that a golden cord. Just. And through these cords, all of the sensory apparatus of the physical body are a way that the soul then experiences its um, environment while it's half of a soul. Now, of course, the same applies to the, the female when she incarnates. Uh, she's attracted to a female body in this case, two of them, spirit body, physical body. Now we've chosen a soul which has a, here in terms of its separation, a soul which has two halves that are relatively equal in its masculine and feminine traits. But if there was a soul that was dominantly masculine and only had a little bit of feminine traits then they would be attracted to two male bodies and if there was a soul that was dominantly feminine with very little masculine traits as a complete unit then when it splits it would be it would be attracting two female bodies so that's the general process of the incarnation process 
Is there any questions about that before we proceed further? If, if we can wait for the microphone. Just. AJ, where is the soul before it incarnates? And what does it do? It's in a soul union state. The only time you actually get to see the soul with your, with your soul eyes, if you like, is when you are in a soul union state. So the, only time, the first time we saw a soul in this union, in this state, before it incarnates, was when we, were, when we were in a soul union state ourselves. Because at this time, the soul doesn't actually do anything. It's not aware of itself. It's this process of um, incarnation and into the physical and spirit bodies or gaining the physical and spirit bodies that, um, that help the soul begin this process of individuation and understanding that I am a soul. Before this time, there's no awareness. That we, that we exist in this place. May I ask another question? Yeah. Does it mean as well that the soul in this unconscious condition is not even aware of God? That, that's correct. It's not aware of God in a conscious state. So in other words, it does have a connection with God, mm -hmm. and it, but it is not aware of that connection because it's un, in an unconscious state yet. It's yet to actually have a sense of itself and so therefore it's yet to have a sense of its universe, the universe in which it lives. So if you're not conscious of yourself, how can you then be conscious of anything else? And this is the whole process of individualization, which is what this is all creating, is the process of becoming aware of yourself and then of course the process of becoming aware of everything else around you as well. Including God. Including God. Yeah. You can keep uh, going with the questions. May I, That's fine. Yes, please. God created the souls, is yes. that right? Yeah. Yes. So what purpose did he have, if there was any, to make one soul more dominantly masculine or more dominantly feminine, or did this happen by chance, accidentally? Well, no, everything that God creates has a huge variety in it. If you look at, uh, so if you liken it to the creation of trees, you imagine for a moment that every single tree that was created happened to be an apple tree. And there was no other trees. So we would never have any other variety of fruit. We would never have any other variety of like, joy from all these different trees and what they look like. And, and we would actually be very um, stuck in a very plain sort of a world, wouldn't we? So everything that God does has huge amount of variety and in fact uh, universally almost an infinite amount of variety and it's the same with the soul itself the whole complete soul has an infinite almost infinite variety of potentialities as to whether it be dominantly masculine and dominantly feminine and anywhere in between so the reason why God does this is for our enjoyment so that we so we have more uh, variety and therefore a wider joy of experience so it's actually a gift of love that God creates everything with very very wide variety and not all the same so you imagine if we were all the same then basically there would never be any um, there would never be any homosexuality on the planet which would already create a lack of variety amongst you know our experiences here on the planet so so the, the key is is that God is always giving this gift of t almost infinite variety to us to experience because each soul even in them uh, when they're split into a uh, say a male form and a female form they each have their unique personality yeah. so it's like a spectrum of personality and attributes if you like of so which the sexual attribute is one. is one and and that's something worth pointing out that this sexual attraction this sexuality part of us is a unique I mean it's an attribute of every soul and and that's why we talk about it under the term the human soul and specifically in relation to soul mates because sexuality was created as part of the soul mate um, relationship yep. of the soul yeah I do so understand this maybe one last question yeah, far away. the soul when it is incarnating is completely happy with its own condition or does not yes because sometimes when you say completely happy it's not even aware of its own condition just before incarnation because remember it doesn't have any self-awareness yet it gains self-awareness through the process of incarnation. The soul, though, is in a pristine condition 
without awareness. So in other words, it doesn't have emotional injuries like the rest, you know, that we gain during the process of incarnation. And to be honest, we only gain those emotional injuries because of the emotional injuries of the environment in which we're incarnating. If the environment was free of emotional injuries, then the soul would go through this beautiful process of becoming self-aware without having to also go through absorbing lots and lots of emotional injuries. Yeah, this was going to be my question because sometimes, for example, if you are um, bipolar or if you are just homosexual, they meet a lot of um, prejudices, a lot of... Uh, um, judgment and then it might not be a very happy situation anymore so that's what why my question well it's only we used not to be all unhappiness on the earth is created by our emotional injuries it's not created by love so God creates all these beautiful things in from a state of love creates all this beautiful variety from a state of love and it's only the environment in which the soul is incarnating that causes it to actually be, be to, to attract or, or usually through the parents emotions again attract judgmental conditions so you're right many homosexuals and lesbians in the past have attracted much judgment and a lot of that is to confront us uh, you know we need to be confronted in our concepts of what God's variety of creation is and unfortunately um, for the majority of people on the planet we're very resistive to confronting our belief systems and God is creating variety constantly in order to confront our belief systems actually to help us confront the systems of belief that we have and part of the confrontation of that is the fact that there are some souls that are homosexual and some souls that are lesbian in, in nature. In the sense, um, from God's perspective, it's not really a homosexual or lesbian either. It's not really a label like that, um, a, which we'll discuss in yeah. a minute. We'll talk about the soulmate, the pure soulmate attraction in a minute. But uh, the reality is when it does attract the bodies, it does attract two female or two male bodies and therefore we view it here on earth as a homosexual or lesbian relationship. But the reality is every relationship God created is actually a soulmate relationship. So in other words, God doesn't differentiate between a homosexual soulmate relationship, a, a, a lesbian soulmate relationship, or a heterosexual soulmate relationship. To God, they are all just one thing, and that is a soulmate relationship. That's all. Uh, the two halves of the soul slowly joining together. So there's no, you know, in the spirit world in particular, there's no labels like that. So, yeah, there's no preference. In our pure state, it's not that I prefer men or I'm attracted to men. In my pure state, I'm attracted to my soulmate. Who now, happens that could to be, be male. A, that, it is a male, but I, I could be what the world would label homosexual. But in my pure state, I would just only have an attraction to my soulmate who happens to be female. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And we want to talk more about that as an introduction uh, going through this process of what sexual attraction is all about. Yeah.